Shalom friends, this is Daniel with Bless Israel Network and this is another episode of My View as a Jew. Today I want to talk about Paul. Mm, now I want to talk about Saul. I want to talk about Shaul. Is that three different people? No, it's the same person. Well, depending on your point of view, all right? I'm being a little sarcastic here, but there's a lot of confusion about this iconic figure in Scripture. And before I get into the couple of topics regarding him that I want to talk about, I want to preface this by saying, I'm not a scholar, I'm not a theologian, I'm not an intellectual, I'm not a rabbi, I'm not a pastor. And this is not going to be a lengthy, intellectual, highbrow dissertation of any kind. It's going to be fairly brief and pretty simple, to the point. But what I'm trying to do is to hopefully get people to understand that if we're going to walk down the road towards redemption, we got to do it together. We've got to stop this disunity. We've got to hold each other up. And we've got to be in agreement on so many important issues. And there is so much division, it's heartbreaking. Really heartbreaking. I mean, I'm, I'm brokenhearted half the time because I see so much division that's going on and name calling and, and breaking of relationships and so on. Let's not do that. Let's use the one thing that we can rely on, which is this scripture, to prove our points. And let's look at it clearly, not with prejudicial eyes or a closed heart. We may have been holding on to a particular viewpoint for many years, but let's open up scripture and look at a couple of topics here and hopefully we can get some revelation, no pun intended, on a couple of points regarding Saul slash Saul slash Paul, okay? The first one, which is a really hot button issue, is, is he a Jew? Is he a Christian? Is he a Messianic? What is he? Well, there's a, uh, a verse in scripture, which a lot of people tend to use to demonstrate who he is. And I'm gonna read it to you. It's 1 Corinthians 9, 20 through 22. To the Jews I became as a Jew, so that I might, win with, I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law, to those who are without the law, as without law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without the law. Whew. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I so that I may, by all means, save some. Okay, that's really a confusing set of words there, but I'm gonna to try to summarize it, okay? First of all, he's talking about being all things to all people, so he's putting himself in the place of being a Jew who does not know Yeshua. He is already Yeshua's emissary, okay? But he's speaking about talking to Jews who do not yet know who their Messiah is. Have you ever heard the term empathize? When you're having a disagreement with someone, you know, don't you think the most effective way to do that is to put yourself in their shoes first and foremost, and that might give you an opportunity to be able to more effectively communicate what you're trying to say? You understand? It's, it's, it's really an important way to win someone over. If all you do is advance your own point of view, and you don't take into account where they're coming from and you can't empathize or care to empathize with their point of view, it's not going to be very effective on your part and they're not going to really hear you. What Shaul slash Paul is saying here is, I put myself in their position, Jews who don't yet know Messiah, in order to be able to more effectively communicate with them. It doesn't mean that he went back to being a legalistic uh, unsaved, if you will, Jew. Not true. He was simply attempting to use language that these Jews who did not yet know Messiah would understand. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is a favorite uh, uh, section of scripture which some people tend to use to promote 
the fact or their view that he's not Jewish, that he's basically a Gentile, he's all things to all people, he's benign, that he has no ethnicity of any kind. Sorry, eh, 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 eh. not true. This man, Shaul slash Paul, is a Jew, okay? And I'm gonna prove it to you by reading this line from scripture. Romans chapter 11, verses one, starting right here. In that case, I say, as God repudiated or rejected his own people, heaven forbid, for I myself am a son of Israel from the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not repudiated his people whom he chose in advance. What is he saying there? He's saying, hey, folks, I'm a Jew. That's my pedigree. I was born and raised as a Jew. Simple as that. So he's not a Gentile, and he's not a converted Christian, and we'll get to that in a couple of moments, okay? So in addition to those verses, there are some other verses which I'm going to read to you in a few moments about whether or not not only was he a Jew, is he a Jew, is he a Pharisee who loves and observes Torah? But first things first, we've established that he's a Jew. Now, let's read some verses about how he feels about Torah, okay? Because some people think that he just simply became a Christian and that was the end of his Jewishness, that was the end of Torah observance and so on and so forth. Well, let's look at a few verses about that. Romans 3.31, does it follow that we abolish Torah by this trusting? Heaven forbid, on the contrary, we confirm Torah. Romans 7.12, Torah is holy, righteous, and good. Acts 24.14, I believe everything that agrees with the Torah and is written in the prophets. Romans 2.13, for it is not those who hear the Torah that are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey Torah who will be declared righteous. And Romans 7, 22 and 25. I delight in God's Torah. I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's Torah. Now I ask you, in all honesty, does that sound like someone who doesn't like Torah? who doesn't observe Torah, who's suggesting that others shouldn't observe Torah. When I mean others, I mean Jews, okay? No, it doesn't. It's just the opposite. This is his own words from scripture. The next question is, after we've established that he is a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin, from the seed of Abraham, and that he does observe Torah, okay, is he a Pharisee? Okay, well, let's look at a couple of lines about that. Acts 23, chapter 6. Then, knowing that some of them were Sadducees and others Pharisees, he called out, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, descended from Pharisees. I stand on trial because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. That's one verse. Now, Acts 26, verse 5. They have known me for a long time and can testify if they are willing that I conform to the strictest sect of our religion, living as a Pharisee. What does that say? He's a Pharisee. And the final topic that I'd like to touch on very briefly, this is a favorite amongst people, and I've heard pastors all over the place say this. Saul's name got changed. He converted in Acts chapter 9. Well, my friends, I'm going to challenge you. Open whatever Bible you've got. Go to Acts chapter 9. Read the whole chapter, and you will not find a single verse in that chapter that says, and your name is changed to Paul. It just simply isn't there. That particular chapter is even called Saul's conversion in some translations. Conversion, 
So in other words, he stopped being a Jew. Well, here's all these scriptures saying that he is a Jew. He stopped obeying Torah. Here's all these scriptures conf uh, conf um, confirming that he did obey Torah. He stopped being a Pharisee. No, here's all these verses I just read you that says that he is a Pharisee. So let's sum up real quickly here. Shaul slash Paul slash Saul is a Jew who never stopped being a Jew. He is Torah observant and he is a Pharisee. And my source for this, which I have read to you right from scripture itself. So my friends, uh, this is a short message. Um, I hope it doesn't uh, ruffle too many feathers, but if you have some comments to the contrary, I would love to have you drop me a note and please share your point of view. We care for you very much. We appreciate all of your support and we're always open to hear from you. And if this message has blessed you, please consider and go, go to our consider go to our website www.blessisraelnetwork.com and support our ministry. And God bless you for now. Bye.